authorities in front of you. And today we've got Gary Mortimer from SUAS News to sit with us today and comment about some of this and have a bit of a discussion. Welcome, Gary. G'day. Are you saying that the authority that I'm like an authority or like they must come and investigate me as well? What are you saying there? Oh, look, you definitely need investigation. I mean, <laughs> you're a scary kind of guy. But before we do anything, yeah. let's let's get the video up on the screen. And you have you've seen this before, but some of our viewers may not have seen it before. Let's quickly roll a clip. That feed that I used to live in Australia, uh, and, and I used to drink VB beer, and I noticed that VB beer was empty then. It was indeed. So the first comment is, it turns out it's harder than they thought to build a drone that could lift a human. And obviously that was some of their initial work to try and work out how to do it. And any any video has got to have some sort of electrified skateboarding. That's a very, and look, there's an e-bike. <laughs> ET phone home, I do like that. And then we reach the upper Coliban Reservoir. No fuel powered aircraft, I think is what it said, but human lifting drones accepted. The, of course, you know, when you <laughs> blame them, um, it's that, that beer was pre empty, but you, watching it again, with different eyes now, really, aren't we? Because we know the cat is not happy, and I don't like that APC logo in the bottom, bottom right hand corner. That worries me. And and we've got the uavme.com.au logo in the left. Obviously, I know there's a connection to to those guys because it was, I believe, through their channel that we saw the video. And there's a group of people that that won't be looked on well, but they're in control of the of the of the um, organizer, so that wouldn't mitigate that. But I tell you what, I'm or am I? Is that or is that now? Is that someone flying him or is that someone flying the Phantom? Very good question. So there's two aircraft involved. Um, there's obviously the the drone that's carrying and lifting and then there's another one that's above that following as well oh look, there was a string going back to the shore you, the whole operation was tethered it the was i saw away. that i saw that as well absolutely see when i first watched this i do know how hard it is to play and especially to make these big Big, making a big multi-rotor is really, really hard. And when I first watched it, I thought, what a, what fun, good for them, and park it, really. And I suppose it also made me think, well, as long as you've got enough cash to apply, then this is the future. Yeah. Y yibbity. Yibbity, yibbity. Um, yibbity, yibbity. <laughs> and what does that mean exactly? Uh, it's, a, it's a phrase that comes from um, a TV show that was on Australia some time ago. I can't even remember what show it was, but that was one of his catchphrases. So unless Cass is using the VB against him because they're based in Canberra and they don't VB over there, um, then um, although I suppose this, there is a Melbourne office um, down at that airport, uh, down at the bottom, I uh, can't remember what it's called. But what are they... they what are they, uh, well, what are they got their knickers they, in a knot about? Because it's... It's not because it's not a home built or experimental aircraft, is it? In America, there's that Kitty Hawk thing that, that Casey Neistat went off to fly, and a few of the other things. The difference is that the controls are on board the thing, and that makes it like an ultralight. And I couldn't see a controller in, in his hand or on his lap or whatever. And even, oh, you know, if you want to do this at, kid, at home, kids, just put one on your lap and <laughs> pretend. Anyway, no, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you that question. Hypothetically, if, if we have a look at some of the technology that's being used in the Skydio at the moment with the, um, the GPS position beacon, something that small, what level of control is required to be in control? They're able to sell that Skydio because you have the ability to press the return to home button. That's all the yes. capability you've basically yeah. got. So yes. if he had a return to home button, 
would that be sufficient control for it to not be a remotely piloted aircraft? That's a really good question and a whole different kettle of ball games. And I suspect you would find that even the FAA, if they were to realize that you had no direct control over the um, Skydio in what they consider to be the normal sense, would go, oh, hang on a minute. Um, and I don't honestly know uh, where it is defined as the level of control that the person on the ground must have. No, it's a very, very good question. It's not I don't published anywhere. No. Yeah. No. Okay. So, so let's just briefly move on. So what happened? So we know that someone knocked on his door oh, in dear. a thrifty rental van. Do you, do, you know, do, you know, do you know what that reminds me of? What that exactly reminds me of, apart from the vegetation, is the um, is the uh, the photos that we saw from the people that were fingered for the Gatwick job in their house <laughs> somewhere near Gatwick. That's exactly how it looked. There was a van and people looking grumpy. Yeah. So is the it? report the report that I've got is that um, CASA and the Australian Federal Police turned up, and that's a photo that was provided to me, um, and certainly. The understanding is in terms of the paperwork, we saw the beginning of that um, at the very beginning of today's broadcast. So this is part 3A of the Act, Investigation Powers, which tells us that uh, an investigator can compel you to answer questions and produce documents. So in other words, CASA can issue a warrant. You must answer the question, otherwise you're committing an offence. You must produce documents, otherwise you're committing an offence. So that's the beginning. They turned up. By the way, just to share, Gary, they didn't turn up at his house. They turned up at his parents' house initially. And then he wasn't there and any of the equipment wasn't there. So subsequently they went to his house where they didn't have a warrant for that location and he promptly told them to go and get one. But they did and they came back later. So that's, that's where things started. How do you feel about how do you feel about the concept of being a, um, a, a an ARPAS drone pilot, and you can have the authorities come into your house and compel you? Sure, there's got to be a warrant; it's got to go through a process. But how do you feel about that prospect? Well, here's the, here's the interesting thing: if you're in the UK, they're just remo or are busy removing the requirement for a warrant, and they can even open up the back of your car and see if you've got something in there or, or wherever you are. So that that's is is a real concern. Um, it does feel a little bit like um, drone operators are becoming extra special criminals. All of us um, with our own special "we'll get you" rights <laughs> regulations for no real good reason. Um, I don't. Drones are bad. You've got to remember, well, Gary, drones are bad. Yeah, that, that's spot nine, isn't it? So it's obvious, really, if you think about it properly for just a second, you're absolutely right. Um, well, that seems like pretty heavy handed. Why couldn't they just what what were they afraid of him destroying? Why couldn't they have just said, look, because how, how it normally happens, I suspect there will have been a complaint from someone. And then they'll have had to have considered that complaint and then considered the action they're taking. And normally, with my manned aviation hat on, the only reason I know this is I've had a couple of times when, 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 through no fault of my own, I have attracted the attention of, of the aviation authorities, and they've come and asked me questions. But it's been very, it's been look, this is happened. very this cordial, is very cordial, and and we haven't jumped straight to, and nothing's happened. I didn't get that, but actually. And it wasn't me. I do so. So that's what's happened to me. That's my experience. And honestly, this wasn't me. I have an honest. It really wasn't me. A friend of mine reported he had what he considered to be a, a, a weather change on him fast in flight, and he thought it was um, uh, dangerous. And so, or, or he could have got him into trouble. But it didn't. He landed. It all was good. And, but he put in a, a voluntary report about what happened to him. And the buggers came after him and took him to court. And he volunteered. He wanted to put a safety case in so it wouldn't happen to other people. And we have an, an expectation of our confidential human incident reporting system, CHIRP, that you won't get into trouble. But he did. They took him to court. And that was in the UK. It wasn't the honest governor. A system um, called CHIRP. It almost sounds like Twitter. But anyway, I digress. Let yeah, me move I mean, on to... Pretty, pretty 
But I suspect somebody's complained, and what I would have expected was the regulator would have just gone, look, we've got to have a chat. But plainly, they escalated it up a little bit more. So what are they worried about? What are they afraid of? They're worried about copycats. Uh, and, and what's the trigger? I, you know, I'll almost bet it was a commercial operator in Australia that moaned, dob, dob them in. That's your word, isn't it? Dob them in as well. That's the I'll word. Watch yeah. That's the word. But let me talk about complaints just for a moment. So I, I, I spoke to CASA, to their media liaison, and I did ask, you know, what's going on here? And the, the official response is CASA is actively investigating the incident involving the carrying of a person underneath a remotely controlled aircraft at a Victorian dam earlier this year. At this stage, it is not appropriate to comment further as the investigation is ongoing. So well, that, yeah, we're, that's in, we're thing, investigating. But that's, your, yeah, you did kind of expect that with an ongoing investigation, but the remotely controlled part, that's the that's where they're going from, isn't it? It's a model aircraft drone, whatever you will. It's not, it's not an experimental aircraft. Um, but there's an interesting question. I, the first time I looked at the video, I'm, I said to myself, that's not a RPAS in the traditional sense. I mean, you and I both know that the old term used to be unmanned aerial system, right? So mm. anyway, but it's, it's not a, a, a traditional drone. Very much not. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy. No, it's no, it's not. But it's a big one, and it's it probably be all using all the same systems. I'm just trying. I'm trying to be the regulator now. Let me. Thinking, let where me, am I going to get him? How am I going to get him? How am I going to get him? Let me ask you this question: If you have a look at um, manned systems, right? Uber taxis, Uber Air, whatever they're called, they're not going to be under the ARPAS regulations. But they're going to be carrying pilots, aren't they? For they, they, they themselves have said for the first few years they'll have qualified pilots driving them. Right. So that's so how they get away. Day one, they absolutely will. But day two, you're not going to have them under the same regulations that you're going to be, you know, regulating traditional quads. That just doesn't make sense. No, they'll be under they'll be under the manned aviation regulations. Right. So we're in agreement that it shouldn't be treated under this. This part of the act, but let me continue. I digress again. No, so, but no, no, but it wasn't being controlled. The difference is that you've got a driver sat in it, and and I'd say even just the act of having a controller in the lap would have made it very hard for them to prove it wasn't being controlled from True. that bottle of VB. Um, but what you so just that's, said. That's, but what you just said was that at some, future, at some point in the future, at some point in the future, it would be. Um, a manned aviation, even if the pilot wasn't on board. So at that point, you thought it was going to be under manned aviation regulations. Why not now? Yes. Yeah. Well, right anyway. now, right now, right now with this very case, because it wasn't controlled from on board the aircraft. Mm. So even later on, where you've got a um, a passenger aircraft which is not being controlled from on board the aircraft. You think that should still be uh, regulated under the ARPAS regulations in the future? I think, I, I think in in the future, future, if we want to put that hat on, it'll it'll go from manned operation to uh, some form of new type of certification or category or class or whatever uh, that will deal with autonomy and levels of autonomy and all that sort of a thing. We're very far away from that with our the current controllers yeah. and how we business um we're talking a different we're talking skydio meets cray one supercomputer meets whatever 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 we're long 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 way off we're not 2025 uber will pick it be picking us all up as so we're long long there are many 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 things that have got to be crunched for that but well, I would, hang on i'll be talking about here and now aren't we talking about tim and how let's talk about here and now in, let's talk about here and now in fact let's go backwards a little bit so in terms of previous breaches of aviation legislation, there are a couple of examples of some things that went, you know, went wrong. Drones crashing. There were actual drone accidents. There was two cases where drones were shot out of the air. One of them was that quarter of a million dollar LIDAR survey drone that happened um, close to Canberra, I think it was. And there was a second one where a um, real estate agent was doing some photography and a neighbor decided to shoot it out of the sky. 
Both of those were reported to CASA. And what concerns me is the fact that when drones are bad and, you know, drone safety, all of those bad things and, you know, drones are bad, we've got to worry about it. But this other one where someone's doing the wrong thing against the drone and shooting at the drone, CASA did not act. You, no, well, but they have to, don't they? Well, don't they? Well, they didn't. And well, in who, fact, well, who, who acts? If I'm not trying to shoot a bird out the sky, if I, I can't just fire. You don't, I don't think it's a big thing in Australia at weddings to all fire machine guns in the air, is it? I don't think you're allowed to do that, are you? Or, or shotguns? Well, no, this is not America. We're not meant to have guns unless you're a farmer or something with a licensed weapon anyway. But two, two occasions, and I know they were both reported to CASA because... I was talking to CASA about them myself. And in fact, it was also reported to Air Services Australia. And guess what? I had a look at the Air Services Australia incident list after the fact, and it didn't appear there. They've either ignored the report or decided, no, it's not an incident. No, it's not an aviation safety matter for someone to shoot an aircraft out of the sky. Are there any, could you find any instances of light aircraft being shot at whilst low flying that action was then taken against that, uh, um, those people? There was one in the US. Now, I, not, I don't know about Australia, but there was a lady who actually mistook a light aircraft for a drone over her property and decided she was going to shoot it down. She shot at it, she missed, but that was in the US. In Australia, no. But even... You know, laser pointers being pointed at uh, yeah. aircraft. Yes. CASA yeah. and air services and, you know, the safety regulators, they take action against that type of an incident, but not when you shoot a drone out of the sky because drones are bad and, you know, we've got to support these people killing the drones. But the, in, in effect, well, in effect, the, the drone operator is, that, I'm, I'm sure the people with, uh, with the LIDAR are absolutely livid because I don't know if it works the same over there, but as I found in the UK and here, if you've got an insurance claim, you better um, dot the I's and cross the T's with your evidence. And the first thing uh, I'm guessing the insurers would want to know about is, well, what did the Civil Aviation Authority say about it? Well, what did the, surely the police, surely they must have reported that to police and that must have kicked it off. And then the police, maybe they wouldn't know that then it's an offence to shoot an aircraft down. And then that should have gone to CASA and then, no, no one else. It should have gone police, CASA, put the person in prison. Well, they didn't investigate. But here's what's even worse. For one of those two incidents, the people, the person who shot the real estate drone down was charged with firearms offences, but CASA decided there was okay. no there was no aviation safety issue with interfering with the operation of an aircraft while it's in flight. That wasn't an issue that CASA wanted to look at. Sure, I think I'm pretty sure. right in saying, mm. sorry, but I think I'm pretty right in saying that there's nowhere in the world that has actually prosecuted a drone uh, shooting down or shooting at. There have been several around the world. And I think aviation authorities with my tin foil hat on are afraid of doing that because that really does uh, legitimize our past. Okay, when it suits them, as in, well, in fact, in fact, for Tim, they're using it's a model airplane, it's a drone to get him but when it suits them uh, they'll they'll say it's an aircraft um and you should you shouldn't have done that it's an aircraft you've been very naughty you've broken the aircraft rules but when it doesn't and but when it doesn't suit them they ignore it i'm not putting this very well but they if if they if they as somebody actually does get prosecuted for shooting at a drone and it goes through that legitimizes an aircraft and then CASA and other regulators are going to have to protect um drone operators with the same veracity as they do manned aviation. And I don't think they are anywhere in the world at the minute. They should be protecting the, what in effect is a tiny airline, the people that I feel sorry for, the people that line it. I don't think I can ever feel sorry for a real estate agent. I think that's a pretty international thing as well. But I feel sorry for the LIDAR operator because that's a who never a lot of money. And I'd be very keen to know what their insurers have said about all this and, and how that is. Um, because I've got, they've got proof. I wonder, did they have pellets in the LIDAR? What proof did they have? Look, but at the end of the day, what really concerns me is this was an experiment 
an experimental aircraft is how I see it. You know, that can be debated where there was no actual safety incident. But there were two confirmed incidents where yes. the aircraft crashed after having a weapon launched against an aircraft. And that concerns me. But I don't want to I don't want to go on the past too much. I just wanted to highlight that I think there is a problem with the way our aviation safety regulators are treating drones ARPAS. It's they're bad unless they, you know, anyway. It's a, it's a little bit like in the UK with the keeping the air proxies, um, the, the, the sightings of airliners truthful and honest and having and having that that part of it's it's not actually the regulator it's a different standalone unit but they're having to report things more accurately now to stop newspapers picking up stories that say it might be a potential ufo but if if they really did have you, buried did that, you read like, the story that, did you read the story in the last on. week um the airprox board actually put out a report about a flying pig yeah 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 <laughs> which anyway. i mean that, that would that, that could easily be a toy balloon. It could, could have been Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or, you know, name a party balloon. <laughs> it could easily have been any of those. Yeah. Um, it, so it, let's, they, let's, let's, let's go back to our document for a little okay. while. Have a yeah. look about yeah. what actually happened, right? So we, they can investigate. They can come into your house. They can compel you to answer questions. Otherwise, you're a bad person and you've got penalties. They can compel you to hand over documents. Then we go down to the actual warrant itself. We've got four offences, one under Section 29, offences in relation to aircraft under Section 20A, reckless operation of an aircraft, hazardous operation prohibited, and operation near people. Those last two are actually CARs, which are uh, regulations that apply to drones, not to general aviation. So, Yeah. But well, that's Jekyll and Hyde, isn't it? So you've got aircraft and you've got RPAS. So you've got two sides of the coin there. You've got aircraft charges and drone charges. Which Pick would a card, you like it to card. be? Pick a card. Yeah, exactly. Pick a card. Yeah. Look, we're going to yeah. prosecute. We're going to prosecute you for driving a motorcycle and a car at the same time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, yeah, you'd ride, yes, ride a motorbike on top of a car. Yes. <laughs> so what were we getting for? Yes. Okay. So moving on, the actual warrant itself, we've got the warrant authorizes you to use as much force as necessary and reasonable to go into the house of your parents. <laughs> yeah. The actual I story suppose. is the actual story is the address given was the address of um Tim's parents. So they're gonna go on to their into their parents' house and they're gonna have Whoa. and then a little bit but later should, um, they obviously didn't do good enough uh, due due diligence as to where he actually lives. So mate can't can't get the whole thing get kicked out from the start. If has does Tim have very expensive lawyers? Um, I don't know the quality of his lawyers. Um, I'm sure they're very expensive. They all are. Yeah, <laughs> you can only say the best. <laughs> He's got the best lawyers money can buy. So at that point, they've gone into the wrong house, the house of his parents. They turned him away and said, sorry, Tim's not here. And neither is any of his stuff. So thanks for coming. But then he goes, the, the, the investigator goes to Tim's house and Tim says, show me the warrant. They have a look at the warrant. That's not my address. Thank you for coming. Try again. So again, the quality of the process, they haven't done their due diligence to actually understand what it is that they're doing or expecting to find. These are just fabricated fishing expedition, pardon the pun, warrants. <laughs> and coming with a very big stick. Um, I, I, yeah. I, 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 seems like overreacting doesn't it overreacting yeah unlike when an aircraft is shot out of the sky but shot out of the sky I, when you don't react yes yeah so what are they actually looking for they're looking for amateur built multi-rotor handheld radio controllers and aluminium chair yes 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 and, and the vb maybe they don't know maybe it's a complaint from another beer maker black laptop computer a black Steel. laptop computer a black one. Oh, where, where, where was that in the video? Did we see that in the video? We didn't see that in the video, but here's, no, the inter here's the interesting thing. If I go back to 
what I was talking about, CASA. When I asked them about um, the the source of the the referral, and I was asking them about the shooting one before, the comment that I got back from CASA was, CASA takes seriously any breaches of the aviation safety legislation. We will investigate possible breaches when sufficient information is available. This can come from many sources, not just matters referred from other agencies. We obtain information from members of the public, information from public sources such as social and traditional media, and direct observations through surveillance. How did they know there was a black laptop there? Yeah. Yeah, well, it wasn't in the Sorry video. Sorry to was ask. It? it wasn't in the video. It wasn't anywhere else that I'd seen. How do they know Mission Planner? How do they know what flight control? But it's obvious, isn't it? He's probably been on the forums asking advice and how, how am I going to build this thing? So, yeah. you know, well, a black helmet. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> a video camera designed to go on a helmet, video footage from the operation at the address of his parents i gather invoices receipts well you wouldn't need all this because this is plainly one of the greatest crimes that man has ever seen so you wouldn't need all this unlike the shooting down of an aircraft designs and plans and drawings second condition it's got to relate to one of two people timothy french or sam foreman and beyond that what does it actually all mean Offences in relation to aircraft. What is the offence that we're guilty of here? Section 29. Um, the first one, part A, doesn't matter, I don't think, because... Oh, no, it does. I looked at this before. I'm getting mixed up. Uh, part B, subsection 1, use of an aircraft, of an aerodrome. So that bit doesn't apply no, because we're not no. coming from an aerodrome. But hang on. Isn't this relating to remotely piloted aircraft systems? Why would we be talking about aircraft? <laughs> why would we be talking about aerodromes? And why? Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, is is there? Well, I don't know. Is there an aerodrome near that place? Is it within the in a controlled airspace or anything? Um, look, you, you know pretty much that if they've gone to this much trouble to plan the event, they wouldn't. They would have oh, checked sure. the airspace. Uh, Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. No, I'm. No, I've been trying to be the devil's advocate. Okay, you are the devil. Moving on. <laughs> well, there's that as well. <laughs> what else have we uh, got? Uh, but but, uh, but uh, would a, would, would a, uh, we should you should have found a lawyer. Would a lawyer said these are just things to put the frighteners on us? Because the thing that stood out on both of those for me was the first one, one year in prison. The second one, five years in prison. So I've that's caught. If this is, has arrived in my inbox, I've already it's, it's caught my attention. I'm now terrified. Yeah, yeah. But again, there are other things which are conveniently not investigated. I, I keep going back to that point, and it yeah. really frustrates me. Sorry if I keep hammering it. And who do you, if, if that's the case, and you've uncovered a scandal, and, and who do you report that to? The police? Well, as it happens, not only did I report the uh, oh, okay. the incident of the, the the drones being shot down to both CASA and to the safety regulator, but I also sent a copy of that to the minister's office, the minister oh, okay. for transport, and I never got a response back from the minister as to explain why its own safety regulator is not doing its job properly. Well, some, some, well, yeah, some, somebody somewhere, and it's, and that, that isn't the decision. That wouldn't have been the decision of the person that took your call or read the, read the email. That's gone up a chain of command somehow and been buried one or two people further up. Or maybe there is a departmental policy that actually states we shall not, um, and that that needs to be found. Are you allowed to do freedom of information requests against your? Um, regulator we probably are but like i said again that it didn't exist you can't how do you do a request against an event or an incident that is not in their records but, but they must they must have a record of your communication oh well, i've got a copy of my sent items folder because that's even more for, I, i'm gonna I, uh, no i was going to use a word then which i'll stop i'll stop myself using um but that's even more dodgy, isn't it? If they don't even record it. Uh, um, it. The statistics look really good if you don't record the things that you don't want people to see. 
no, you can't say things like that. You can't adjust the t- statistics by burying what you want to bury. People wouldn't do that. The world would fall apart if statistics wouldn't be based on the truth. How could that be? How could that be? It's impossible. And anyway, we're going off topic a little bit. I well, keep, keep going down that list. Reckless operation of an aircraft, endangering the life of another person. Um, uh, so must... that, that, one, that one you can get around because if those people on the shoreline are all within your control, then that's okay. So that's you get out, you'd step, you jump aside of that one easily. I think the reckless one absolutely is going to be jumped away from. But having said that, there's more info. We'll go down. Hazardous operation okay. prohibited. Um, any way that pr- creates a hazard to another aircraft, personal 50 property. Fifty penalty units. We've got a scorecard now. Now we're playing penalty. We're playing um, prosecution bingo. Or Red card. Now. Red card. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Send him off. Okay. Operation I'm sorry, near I'm people. Sorry I'm making light of this, and if, if it was actually me, Tim should be watching this. I'm very. I'm sorry to be making light of this, Tim. I've, yeah. I find there's another point. I find this ridiculous, but I would. I personally would be terrified now. Yeah, operation near people, the 30-metre rule, um, right. who is not directly associated with the operation of the RPA. Yeah, now, so that's, we got rid of that, yeah. I've got a view and, you know, this is not trying to get around regulations, but in real-world situations, you've got a person who's the pilot in command, you've got another person who's next yeah. to them who might be doing, um, being a spotter or visual observer who needs to be in constant communication it's not appropriate necessarily to say every single person on the shoreline is directly involved with the operation of the aircraft, but I think yeah. that is a kind of yeah. a, yeah. Well, no, but it's, well, if, if you don't have that carve out, how do you ever shoot a movie? How do you ever film a film if, uh, if, if the actors and stagehands and all that are around? So that's, that's how that one's been defended in the past is mm. they're all part of the movie. Somebody, they did try to go after somebody in a movie in America um, for, yeah. for that. And that, no, they're all in the movie. Um, so Subregular- here's a good one does not apply if the second behind. person standing okay. behind the RPA while the RPA is taking off so we're good with that one these um, ones that are greyed out were not included in the original warrant but um, you know I just included them there for completeness they probably don't apply let's move on so here's the particulars here it is then yeah the reservoir operated an aircraft Mr. Timothy French. Now, if I have a look back at that video, did you see Tim controlling an aircraft? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. Oh, yes, that's that's my argument. Uh, blown, the out, Stig, blown out the, the water, yeah. The Stig, certainly in terms of the credits, at the very least, was the pilot, and um, he is not in the country last time I checked. Okay. Um, well, hang Mr. on. Sam- no, operate, uh, operating, piloting. Uh, yeah, that that is illegal. That's it's all going to turn on legal legalese, isn't it? Piloting, operating. What are we talking about? I was talking about piloting earlier. An operator doesn't need to be the pilot of the aircraft or of the commercial operation. So I don't know. That there'll be some dodgy jiggery pokery in there somewhere. Mm. Just finishing off, so then we've got someone piloting it. Um, yes. Mr. Sam Foreman is in the aircraft, suspended by steel cables, about 10 to 15 metres with Mr. Foreman in the chair, fishing apparently. You know, the only thing I can see here is, um, did they have a fishing permit? <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Well, that's that's the argument people are making in the UK uh, as regards the drone registration there is uh, at least when you get a fishing license, which is about because some people are saying, well, it's cheaper than a fishing license, but a fishing license pays for bailiffs and it pays for enforcement and the upkeep and improvement of the river, whereas your drone registration is just paying for a £4.1 million database, £2.8 million a year to keep updated. And oh, by the way, already it's had a data breach that's uh, sent out 400 emails to people but anyway, that aside, that aside, you know yes, what? no, well, have, has, the, has the bailiff been contacted? I would have All loved right, to have tended for that contract. I would have loved to have tended for that database contract. Yeah, but, I know. I know. It's, 
where have I got one here? Here's here's a, here's a Raspberry Pi. I can uh, I can use my Raspberry Pi and do it. Um, <laughs> junior, uh, yes, it's just got three cables. If the aircraft to lose power, he would have fallen into water and he never went. This uncontrolled life, of Mr. Foreman would have been endangered. Oh, okay. Oh. Mm, now this comes back to your bicycle, snowboarding, um, all the things, the risks people choose to take uh, sort of thing, isn't it? And the bicycle will kill you if, if it hits you in the back of the head when it, you fall off it. The snowboard mm -hmm. will kill you. The skateboard will kill you. It will all kill you if it hits you in the right place. So by that kind of logic and so forth, the experimental category, which is where I think it needs to sit in the first place, someone is experimenting and trying something that hasn't been done before, as opposed to a traditional operation of a piece of equipment. Yeah. It is experimental. They're having fun. What's the purpose? Having fun. The video is, as far as I recall, not monetized on YouTube. Um, yes, it does have a couple of brands associated with it, which you mentioned before. But at the end of the day, they're larrikins having fun, and they've done it, I believe, yes. in as safe a manner as possible. If you compare it to the, the Bunnings one, which we spoke about before we went live today, that was a little yes. bit different, right? So flying over a bunch of streets between point A and point B without necessarily having a visual observer next to the aircraft at all times, that's a different category. This one, it's everyone who's involved is either part of it or out of the way, and they've planned it yeah. to the nth degree yeah and well just just to get it flying demands a great deal of respect <laughs> if you get those things flying they've plainly tested it plainly run it in the video unfortunately we saw it lose your control and then go through a tree and there were buildings behind so I expect the regulators not very happy about that um but uh well I don't know I don't I have I have no answers except I feel very sorry for them um and uh I I'm very surprised that the regulator has gone this hard, this fast. I can only think that there two two things have happened. They're terrified of copycats where someone does get killed because they haven't done it properly. And then they'll come and knock on their door and say, why didn't you stop the last guy? And or it's a commercial operator that's very jealous of him and um, just wants him smacked down. Mm. Just brief aside, I'm just looking at a comment um, there. So why do you class a drone as an aircraft when it is shot at, but not when you tie it to a yeah. chair with a passenger. Good question. And the fact is that CASA yeah. is putting them both into the same category. So they've either got to treat them the same or not. They've got to work out what they're doing. Yeah, yeah which which side of the fence do they, they actually fall? And uh, and they have got to protect, you know, the, 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 the shooting down of the LIDAR one. If it had been two estate agent drones, I wouldn't be particularly worried. But because it was a because it was the LIDAR one, that's somebody that's a considerable investment. It'll be a machine not that much smaller than this very machine, in fact. And mm. uh, and many lives, when you shoot it, as you said, gravity will win. You shoot the thing down, where's it going to go? If it's a LIDAR, then it probably was operating over a commercial business or a, a mine or, or something. It was doing something power, line, it was doing power, power line inspections. So it's so very that, lucky that it didn't hit the power lines, bring them just down. Just what I was say, shut, shut the hospital down. Shut the hospital down for the day, <laughs> all manner of troubles or something, you know, there's a bit, bit of a throwaway line. But the economic damage that could have caused or fire, fire your big fire problems in Australia could cause a big runaway fire. Yeah, no, there's def that definitely, there's far more potential. So, yes, okay, if the thing fell on him, it would have, it would have caused some light grazing and perhaps a, a mild concussion or death. Uh, yeah. Or you could have drowned or whatever or whatever. But then, as I say, so could your skateboard, so could your bicycle, so could your, so could your, you know. Yeah. Well, just quickly um, whip through the last of this. So, you know, yeah. they're concerned about an uncontrolled fall into the water being struck by the aircraft, egress impeded, etc. They're also talking about someone standing um, on, yeah. the, on the ground as the aircraft takes off and lands. First of all, 10 to 15 metres, I'd love to know um, how they measured that, but that's uh, by the you by. You can do that. If, if, but if they've got to, you can do that from the photos. You can get clever people to measure where everybody is based on, on moving images and photogrammetry, our, our world. So it's possible. But if they've gone to this level of worry about this, if they've really gone to that, 
but 10 to 15 sounds like a guess, doesn't it? But it does. if they've gone to this level of worry or, or detail, they, they, you could use exactly your arguments with that LIDAR thing being shot down, any, any drama that could have caused with it being coming uncontrolled, because guess what? When you shoot it down, it becomes uncontrolled. <laughs> you know, it's, you Not only use, does it you, become uncontrolled, but the batteries in there have very real possibility to yeah, cause fires. Yeah, yeah, if it yeah, comes yeah, down yeah. on the power lines themselves, the power lines yeah. can... We've been there. Let's finish off. We're nearly there. We're getting to the end. Yeah. Then they have the power to seize these things. Now, here's an interesting thing. Do they have the authority to seize any such thing? If I go back to the original top of the document, it says under the Act, they have investigation powers to seize documents and to compel someone to answer questions. Does the Aviation Act actually allow CASA or the Australian Federal Police to seize anything other than documents? Or is that a consensual thing if they have taken other things? Well, that's a loyally thing, but I can tell you we've got a bit of an example running down here. Our national airline apparently has been getting um, Chinese-made dodgy parts. Not quite Chinese-made dodgy parts, but... Um, but uh, parts that aren't necessarily certified. So in that case, then our aviation authority would have to go in and seize those parts. Mm. But maybe maybe it's just poor wording on the in the document itself. Um, but it's all say it's all frightened the, the bilio out of me. But it, it strikes me that some of their that just about like, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, but most of their their points can easily be shot down. Um, uh, very very quickly by by a good lawyer. It doesn't seem like they've got. It seems like they've been they've been complained. Somebody's annoyed. Somebody in the office in Melbourne's annoyed, and they're trying to make the best of it and frighten someone. I don't know. Does that sound fair, or is that just too offhand? I think you're probably right. There probably has been a complaint. Um, it'd be interesting for for um, to find out who made the complaint. Your earlier FOI question are we entitled to go and do an foi request to find out what started the investigation was it referred to them or was it self-initiated um yeah and because the what i'll say about that though is in the uk uh, parts of the caa and parts of nats you're, you're not allowed to fire i've tried to you're not allowed to fire them um then they put security reasons and stuff so they can very quickly whereas weirdly the police you can <laughs> it's very strange but there we are well, the Australian Federal Police were out there providing the assistance, so I'm sure they'll have copies of the documents. <laughs> anyway, of course. look, of course. I think we've got to the end, but the, wh where's the conclusion? So first question, do you think it was appropriate to allow someone to do experimental stuff, to do snowboarding yes. with a drone, for lack of a better description, right? It, it's, it's not something that's being done in the middle of uh, Melbourne CBD. It's being done yeah, in yeah, the middle yeah. of nowhere. And at, at their own risk. And um, and they haven't just cobbled it together. And and uh, you, you can see that. You, they've got progression. Even that short video shows progression from a crashing to testing, 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 working. So they're not just got up on a Friday and they've had it. A Friday night, they've gone out and had a few VBs. And Saturday morning, they've built it. It's taken a little bit more than that. Um, so yeah, no, I per, per, personally, but then I'm biased, aren't I? We're both biased. Remember, I think it's a good thing. Keep going, um, <laughs> but then from the regular, but then from the regular point of view, oh, it mustn't endanger people. Hang on a minute, it's miles from anyone. A anyone that was in there was under the control. They've accepted the risk. It's no worse than um, than that skateboard, bicycle. Insert your outdoor adventure equipment here. Climbing on climbing on mountains. It's no worse than that. Uh, um what's that uh jumping uh, out of a selection. plane natural selection will help them if it all goes wrong jumping out yeah. of a plane if you're in a perfect yes. good plane people jump out of it for recreation yes. now if yeah. that was not a safety issue how many people have died being suspended beneath a drone versus how many people I have died jumping out of a plane is is it is it a valid 
argument to say because you could say if so therefore if the parachute fails you will die therefore nobody should parachute because their argument is if there was an engine failure if it did whatever it would have crashed can you actually say if we would never drive a car would we because if i hit somebody i will kill them therefore should i be able to drive a car can gary, you use if gary you're not allowed to walk across the road yes <laughs> yes yes but there must I be, say that, so there must be i say that in jest a relative literally a couple of weeks ago was crossing a six-lane highway which at the very beginning of that it's okay the traffic was stopped traffic lights at either end but he tripped and fell over in the middle of the highway so yes something is possible even just crossing a road um yeah. does that mean we should stop crossing roads and you've got to go and yeah. build overpasses across every road anyway we've yeah. reached the end of our little time today it's been fun talking to you any last words or thoughts from you well done tim i liked it It was a great video very hard to make those work i wish you the luck in what you go go with i hope that the the shoot downs can be exposed that's definitely a story and it has relevance to this and if SES news can help in any way then we surely will uh, good luck to you okay gary thanks for being a guest today and chatting about this thanks for watching and if you enjoyed our chat today there's a thumbs up button down below and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe as well and do all of those things thanks for watching bye for now cheers